Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to put the Derby conversation to the side for a minute. I know, shocker, but there's some other things to talk about. Some news that regards Celtic's summer transfer window and the goalkeepers being linked with the club. And also some news towards the renovation of Celtic's scouting department. So, a few big topics to cover. If it means we've got to sacrifice the Derby conversation for five minutes, then it has to be done. Let's talk about the news. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated as we try and get towards the big 50k this year. I'm trying to get as close as possible. And I know you might be gutted there's no Derby conversation today. But remember, we've got the podcast coming out tomorrow morning. We're going to have a, a live stream tomorrow night for one last catch-up or Q&A session before the big game on Saturday. So there will be no lack of Derby content tomorrow before kick-off on Saturday afternoon. So make sure to hit like and subscribe to keep yourself up to date. It would be much appreciated. Let's just get right into the news, shall we? A story that I don't think many people would have been expecting to hear, but we'll start off with it. Celtic have been linked with another goalkeeper, and it's a lot closer to home. An exclusive last night in the Daily Mail from Stephen McGowan uh, has revealed that Celtic are eyeing Liam Kelly. The headline goes that Celtic eye Kelly as Rodgers puts Fur Park keeper on his hit list of summer transfer targets. Celtic have placed Liam Kelly on a list of summer transfer targets uh, as he's out of contract this summer and attracting interest. So that was the, the story from Stephen McGowan late last night and I must admit there has been rumours bubbling away for the last couple of days um, towards the, 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 the notion of Liam Kelly being a transfer target for Celtic this summer with his contract expiring. But I kind of waved them off. I kind of thought it was nonsense, especially after the first WhatsApp rumour that i seen. It just didn't seem uh, logical in the slightest. Um, but this story breaking late last night, adding some substance to those rumours and adding a, a real dose of reality to the fact that it could be a realistic option for Celtic for a number of reasons, and we'll come on to that. It's it's maybe not what many of us were expecting, um, and maybe one that will split opinion, to be quite honest. So we're going to try and look at it as as brutally honest as we possibly can. Highlighted in the article, this is one of the key points I think that people are, are trying to remember at the moment, but Celtic obviously needing homegrown players. The, the line in the article here, well known to Celtic and former Scotland goalkeeper coach Stevie Woods, the 28-year-old comes without a fee and would bolster the number of homegrown players available for Europe. Um, we all know that the no-fee part of that will be extremely attractive to the higher-ups at Celtic Football Club, but in general, the whole point about being a homegrown talent, the Liam Kelly probably provides a number of reasons why he's an attractive option. A lot of people are arguing the point already online, but we've already got Scott Bain for that. He's got that spot as a goalkeeper that provides a homegrown talent. Uh, option for the European quota. Why do we need Liam Kelly? Well, it's a very, it's a very good point to have because I know this one is going to be extremely divisive. I think when it comes to, you know, the first and foremost thing that you've got to get out here, and the thing that stands true the most is Liam Kelly cannot be Celtic's number one next year. It's as simple as that. He's simply not good enough. I think he showed flashes of brilliance in his career of being a good keeper and there's a reason that all Motherwell fans rated him so highly when he first joined the club but I think in recent times there's been a real sort of decline in the quality that Liam Kelly's had. I don't think I'm just speaking as my, my, my own opinions there. I think there seems to be a general opinion of that. I wouldn't be happy with Liam Kelly being number one. Nobody would be happy with Liam Kelly being number one uh, at Celtic Football Club. And I'm taking away all the, 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 the things on the side, by the way. I think you all know what I'm talking about. It's not just because he's a Rangers man, apparently. It's nothing to do with that. I just don't think anybody would be happy with Liam Kelly being the replacement for Joe Hart. You can't go and replace a top quality keeper like Joe Hart with Liam Kelly. It's as simple as that realistically you've got to look at this as the option that Celtic want to bring in as a backup to save themselves some money to put funds elsewhere in the summer window uh, and then bring in a goalkeeper who will actually replace Joe Hart is he the worst number two to have I guess when you think about it for as little as they usually play probably not you look at somebody like Segrist and Bain they've only come in to the team in the last year when they've really had to when Joe Hart's been given a suspension for talking sakes it's not like they're coming in to actually play um, so coming in as a number two and filling in some of that quota, there definitely is positives to it. It's still one I'm 
I'm not overly fussed on. I'm not I'm not entirely keen on it, but I, I can understand why people are having that debate online right now as to whether or not he is the right option to come in as a, a number two or not. Playing 45 times for Motherwell this season and racking up 151 appearances in general for the Firth Park side. He's had an okay Motherwell career, uh, especially when he first arrived. I remember Motherwell fans were ranting and raving about him and the quality he had. He's done well enough as well to get himself involved in the Scottish national team a number of times. He's definitely a solid goalkeeper, but he's a Motherwell goalkeeper, isn't he? He's not a Celtic goalkeeper, he's not even a Rangers goalkeeper. He's a Motherwell goalkeeper. And I can see why people are already getting themselves a little bit... Uh, I would say there's an anxiety around signing him because I think people are just worried that he is going to come in and be the number one option for Celtic. And I would love to sit here... And I know I've just said it, right? I would love to sit here and say that there's, there's no way that he'll be number one next season and that there's a guarantee that Celtic will go above and beyond and sign an actual goalkeeper. But at the same time, I would not put it past this board whatsoever to make him the number one and, and he would be starting the first game of the season next year. I, would put, I wouldn't put it past this whatsoever. So I can understand that sort of anxiety that there is uh, around them right now. Motherwell haven't had a great season. They're obviously in the bottom half of the, the, the table, playing in that bottom half of the split. Um, but obviously not just down to Liam Kelly. It's not as if the goals he's conceded have been the reason he's down there. Um, but I, I, yeah, he's not he's not had the greatest of campaigns. I've seen criticism um, from Motherwell fans and from wider Scottish football supporters online about how Liam Kelly's not been as great this season. Um, what would you make of him being number two? Would you? Is that something that you're happy with? For me, I'm, I, I, I wish that I could speak knowing the full details. Hindsight is going to be the thing that comes back to this. You know, If we sign Liam Kelly on a pre-contract, he arrives at Celtic for no fee whatsoever. Cool, whatever. Um, but that's as long as we, we sign a, a proper good goalkeeper. We've seen the amount we've been linked with. Celtic have been linked with seven or eight different goalkeepers from across Europe for ranging transfer fees and it's not as if a transfer fee makes the player I'm not saying that the most expensive one if we were to sign a goalkeeper for 10 million that means we're going to get the best one for all we know Liam Kelly could be better than a 10 million pound goalkeeper we've seen it backfire in the past with Vasilis Barkas spent about 6 million quid on him he was rotten you'd probably rather Liam Kelly but um, you know we've been linked with so many goalkeepers you'd expect Celtic to go out there and properly recruit um, and I don't think Liam Kelly is properly recruiting. It's good to bolster that homegrown number at the club, yeah, but uh, it's not something that I'm I'm dying for the club to get done, and to be honest, I could take it or leave it. I think the key thing to take from Stephen McGowan's article is this is not like a done deal. It's not like it is happening. Highlight this line again from the article, and I highlight Stephen McGowan's words for you. He is on a list of summer transfer targets a list it doesn't say he's at the top of that list it doesn't say that the list is revolving around him it doesn't say anywhere in the article that Celtic have made contact and signed them he is on a list so you know these lists are obviously going to be extensive they are going to be varied uh, and, and and people's names will come up you know we get linked with so many players in a transfer window that I doubt Liam Kelly's is the only name on there um and I think if I was to try and take a positive from any of this, uh, whether it's Liam Kelly we sign or no, whoever, whatever, I don't care. If I'm going to try and take a positive from it, is if we get him for free, and I don't imagine he'll be on a, a massive contract, I don't think his wages would be high, then that's a hell of a lot more money we get to put into other key areas in the side. A starting goalkeeper, starting defenders, starting midfielders, starting forwards, wingers. That's where I'm trying to take the positive from it, at least, because to be honest, I'm not keen on the signing of Liam Kelly. If you want my overall opinion, I'm just not. And you can try and talk me into it. That's cool. I'm not going to sit and argue with you and saying that he should never be signed or whatnot. It's not that deep, right? But I'm not that keen. The positive I'm trying to take from it is, and if he does sign, is the fact that there is a lot more money to put elsewhere. We don't need to spend money on two goalkeepers. And we're just, you know, freeing up some, some wage budget from Seacrest leaving, getting some money for him, and then bringing in Kelly on a cheaper wage probably so yeah there's there's different things to look at it but keep an eye out Liam Kelly being linked with the club who knows might be a Celtic player next year I think the bigger story from that article though is the, the lower half uh, that Stephen McGowan reports on Celtic apparently ready to begin their renovation of the scouting team at the club beginning with a certain Mark 
Cooper, uh, Stephen McGowan reports that meanwhile Celtic have hired former South American talent spotter Mark Cooper in a revamp of the club's scouting setup. Uh, previously based in South America, Cooper went on to work in the MLS, but the Scot has now been lured back to Glasgow in a full time role. Highly rated by manager Rogers, Cooper has been set the task of improving the standard of first team recruitment, targeting players aged between 19 and 23 with international experience and fitting certain financial criteria. Celtic's hit rate came under scrutiny after a number of the club's summer signings failed to hit the ground running at first team level. Uh, Mark Cooper has already set to work on drawing up a list of players likely to make an impact, expected to sign in the areas of goalkeeper, left side of defence, midfield and attack. Those are reportedly the priority areas for the club. So that's all follows, of course, the departures of Mark Lawwell and Joe Dudgeon, which happened a couple of months ago now. We've been waiting to hear who's going to come in and take on this really, really important role of, uh, you know, fixing the recruitment team at Celtic. And it seems that Mark Cooper is going to be that man. Apparently, he's worked with Celtic in the past and has been responsible for some of the South American signings. Uh, my first impression at hearing that was God help us because... I don't need to remind you, I might put a few of them on screen, just like a roll of honour, a hall of fame if you like, um, as some of the South Americans we've signed, but it's not went well. We've never really signed well from that specific continent. Uh, you know, a couple of decent enough players, guys like Emilio Izaguirre, Luis Palma has been okay, but generally the players have been quite shite. Um, and it's a, a nightmarish situation for us signing from the South American divisions, I feel. But... Um, in, in saying that, I was quickly corrected and quickly told by a few people, and now don't get me wrong, take all this a pinch of salt, this isn't a Ryan 118 exclusive by any means, so let me stress that. I've heard conflicting stories and been told by several people uh, different things, but generally what I've seemed to hear so far is that Mark Cooper actually tried to persuade Celtic not to sign Alexandro Bernabe. Um, he apparently told him, don't do it. And it was very low down in a list of left-backs from the South American continent and divisions. Um, so he's got my thumbs up there. Uh, you know, if he tried to stop us signing Bernabe, he must he must know who's good and who's shite. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's okay. That's not too bad. Um, but listen, we, he looks as though he knows a good bit about his football. He's spotted some good, good talents. People have went to the, the, the depths and the extents of finding old tweets where he, he compared Federico Valverde of Real Madrid to Paul McStay years ago where he still played for Penarol in Uruguay. Um, he's been responsible for another big fines, uh, another few fines over the over the years down in South America to bigger clubs. It seems like he has got an extensive knowledge uh, at that side of the globe. And then obviously stretching up to the MLS as we mentioned as well. So hopefully he comes in and is uh, does a much better job than the previous uh, people that have been in that role. His predecessors, not just Mark Caldwell, but before that, there's a lot of work to do there. I'm not going to sit here and pretend uh, I'm disappointed or overexcited either side of the fence about the appointment. Because let's be real, whoever was given this job at our level, at Celtic Football Club, it was hardly going to be one of the best in the world. It's hardly going to be somebody that stands out. It's not like we're going to go and get the head of recruitment from, you know, a Real Madrid or a Bayern Munich or somebody like that. Whoever was going to get appointed in this job was going to be relatively unknown to me, you, or any any Celtic fan, really. Unless you really dabble in that market of scouting players, if you've got a hobby of doing so, and you might know a few people through connections. We're going, we're going to know nobody. So I'm not going to sit here and say... It's a terrible appointment or it's a great appointment. We'll just have to wait and see. All of us together are going to have to just wait and see what signings we bring in and what happens. What I will say is the club need to treat these guys better. And, and that's a fact because it seems like we've heard, we've heard numbers of stories like this now. Celtic don't let these guys do what they can to their full potential. They put out a, a very vague sort of structure for them to work around and then when they try to work around it, they get told, no, you can't sign the players you like because we can't afford them or we're not giving you the money to sign them. And then we sign the players that come through and are quite clearly not good enough. So we need to start treating these guys with a bit more respect, give them more money to do their job and let them do what they're brought in to do. And that's find the right players, not compromise. Let them do their job. So I'm hoping that Mr. Cooper here is allowed to do his job and hopefully the summer should be an exciting one. I'm looking forward to it. I think we should have a good summer. Um, I think there's more work to do in that recruitment department as well. I don't think that Mark Cooper's the only guy that we'll see 
uh, brought in. I think we'll probably see more as well. But it's a step in the right direction, and that's the main thing. And that's it for today. So there were the two big stories broke, both by Stephen McGowan. Um, of course, usually reliable in his, his, his work as well. So we'll probably get some uh, news throughout the week and developments and see what directions they go in. But aye, as always, take everything with a pinch of salt and all the rest of it. But welcome, Mark Cooper. Nice to see you. If you've enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.